Good afternoon, uh, Chairs Abercrombie and Moore, ranking members Case and Bertho, and members of the Human Services Committee. The House Republican Caucus is appreciative of the opportunity to, to present testimony in support of raised House Bill number 6520. This is an act concerning the provision of temporary state services to victims of domestic violence. This bill fast, fast tracks the application process for victims seeking temporary benefits under the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, commonly referred to as SNAP or SAGA, Cash Assistance, and the Care for Kids Program. Currently, these programs consider the income of all the family members in a household. While the process is suitable for most benefit applicants, it fails to take into consideration the desperate and dangerous situation facing families experiencing domestic violence. In family units where the abuser is the sole income earner or earns income above the qualifying thresholds, victims find it difficult to financially detach themselves from their abusers out of fear of not having financial resources needed to meet their basic living needs. I have spent the last 19 years of my life as a police officer and a strong advocate against domestic violence. Much of domestic violence centers around the abuser's control of the victim, including of controlling the victim's access to these basic needs. This bill will help correct that by excluding the income of the abuser for the SNAP, SAGA, and Care for Kids program, offering victims 90 days of temporary benefits as they try to move on with their lives. It should be noted that precedent for 90 days of temporary services already exists under Medicaid's reasonable opportunity rule that grants temporary benefits to applicants whose citizenship or immigration status can't be immediately verified and is pending further documentation. The House Republican Caucus is grateful to the committee for raising this important bill. However, we have one suggestion to approve the language. We suggest that the bill be amended to ensure that temporary benefits are provided to victims who demonstrate intent to live apart from the abuser. We urge the Human Services Committee to pass House Bill number 6520 to protect families and to provide a path forward for victims of domestic violence. Please allow the full General Assembly the opportunity to debate this important legislation. I thank you, Madam Chair, for the opportunity and I'm happy to take questions. Thank you, Representative Howard. Representative Case. Thank you, Madam Chair. And thank you, Representative Howard, for coming forward. Uh, it's always nice to have uh, new people come forward to our committee and testify. Um, with your background as a police officer with these domestic violence situations, um, I did speak earlier when the commissioner was here. Um, and it is a struggle when you have somebody who is in a, a different type of situation with domestic violence and it happens to be in an affluent situation. And our rules and regulations are that the whole family's um, assets go towards getting benefits. The commissioner did say that she would work with us on trying to find a way to better and to get them benefits. But right now, with your history, what did you see as far as um, these domestic violence victims and where they had to go but couldn't get benefits? Uh, thank you, Representative, for the, for the question. Um, I will tell you that when I started as a police officer at 22 years old with um, not so much worldly experience and having the, the, uh, the good fortune of being raised in a home void of domestic violence, I remember thinking to myself, geez, I, it would be nice if why don't these victims just leave these environments? But as time went on and I, and I got the experience and, and the worthiness to understand how you know, other things go, um, I equate it to this for, for people when I discuss this topic. You know, we all know somebody who goes to work every day to a job they hate, or a job they can't stand, because they need that paycheck to support themselves, to feed their families, to feed themselves, to keep a roof over their head and clothes on their back. Now imagine that, that, that the domestic violence victim is in the exact same boat. They hate living where they are. It's dangerous for them, but they have to stay there because of their basic needs. By providing them a 90-day opportunity to get out and not be held under that umbrella and that control of, of the wage earner who happens to be the abuser, we can actually give these people relief. Um, the, the one uh, revision that, that we suggest is simply to provide a safeguard to make sure that, you know, like any of our programs, that this isn't misused um, for someone who actually isn't necessarily um, being abused and trying to seek relief, but trying to just manipulate our system. But for many of those people, that's exactly what they need to do. They, they need that opportunity and we always talk about a hand up and, and that's really what this is. It gives these, these folks, these victims an opportunity to get out of that environment and get out on their own to rebuild their lives. So thank you for the question. No, but I, I thank you for your answer. And I think you hit it spot on. You know, it, it's giving these people a, a, a hands up in order to get out of the bad situation. Um, 
but unfortunately, when they're given the hand, they're getting it out of the situation, they're brought down with nothing. Right. And that's what we're trying to alleviate here so that, you know, because a lot of them, believe it or not, in my experience, they come with their children. Right. They're pulling their children out of the house too. So they're not eligible to get anything because of all of the assets that the whole family has. But this mother or father is leaving with the kids too. So trying to support them with nothing. I think we really need to look at that as a state because domestic violence isn't something to mess with. And it takes some real courage to pull yourself out of the situation. I agree. And I and here to your point, um, there are many um, domestic violence victims who will tell you they stay in the house because of my children and they endure that abuse because of their children. And what they mean is they can't, they don't have the means to get out. And, and even though we have a state that can provide that for them, they're, they're prevented because the abuser is holding that control over them with their income that has to be reported and that stops them from getting there. And I, that's why I think this is so important.